So you want more bass? Do you? Do you really? Problem solved. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the Lee Song W15 driver. It is a paper cone driver with dual coil that produces a ton of energy in your room from 30 hertz all the way to 5,000 hertz. Is it good? It's not good. It's great. <laughs> I'm just saying that I, I cannot get this at my home. No. I, I would trade this uh, with all my speakers. Not just not the same, man. Oh yeah, that level of that, ugh, that W15, the man. So I was going to talk about three scenarios where I use the W15s, but the video is going to be too long. I'm just going to talk about two scenarios. The first scenario with the F15, I'm using them from 30 hertz to 90 hertz. And listen to this. Yeah, I like it. With the Fast 8, they're, they're, they're starting up around the 200 hertz mark. So I set the W15s at 250, and this is what it sounds like. Well, I tried some of my old plate amplifiers that I had, but these are class AB plate amplifiers, so they're not class D plate amps. Ripped them right out of old subwoofers. Why not? Figured I'd try them. Um, this could be because this plate amp is a little bit not great, but when I use this plate amp and I use the line level, the speaker level in, uh, because I prefer, I prefer the sound signature usually than using the LFE connections. Um, I found that it made the W15s a little bit boomy and sluggish. Maybe it's because they're paired with full range drivers in an open baffle configuration. So the difference in speed was bothering me because the um, full range drivers in the open baffle with no crossovers are pretty damn fast. This was making these the W15s sound boomy. So what else did I try? I don't have it with me right now, but I tried uh, class A single-ended amplifiers uh, with oversized transformers, even large damping, fa actually a significant damping factor in it. It was better than the plate amp, but it wasn't spectacular. Um, single-ended amplifiers, the two that I tried, had a little bit of a difficulty actually driving both coils of the W15 together. Had a bit of difficulty with some kind, some kind of song, especially when it came to synthetic bass, like from a, synth a synthesizer, so electronic music. Mm -mm. Nope, I uh, couldn't keep up. It didn't sound quite natural because synthesized bass sounds super natural. It, it, it wasn't convincing to me. I mean, you could tell that there was something that was off between what was happening with the full range driver and what was happening to W15 with a single-ended amplifier. So next, using push-pull amplifiers, regardless if it was a push-pull uh, class AB, like this guy, a big push-pull uh, class AB amplifier. Uh, this one, this one goes up to 300 watts in four ohm. Much better, much better result. The control of the driver using both coils was much better with the push pull amplifier. Probably due to the nature of the amplification and how it works, because it pushes and pulls. Uh, so the W15 driver just, to me, seemed to have a lot more resolution. I could much e more easily determine what instrument was providing what kind of bass, whether there was a mix between a grand piano, a stand-up bass, a cello, bass guitar. It was much easier to determine where that bass was coming from. Was it from the grand piano? Was it at that, that moment? Was it from the stand-up bass? Uh, was, that the kick, was that the kick drum that did that? Or was it just a really, really hard note on a bass guitar. With this, I was able to tell. And don't get me wrong, I tried it also with a two push-pull amplifier like the Galleon TS120, handled it no problem. The Galleon handled it absolutely with ease. Again, I think it's because of the nature of the push-pull. And regardless, class A or class AB for that amplifier because you can switch back and forth um, between the two and a Galleon held up no problem. What kind of amplifier actually surprised me? Oh my God. <sighs> I'll be right back. So the amplifier that surprised me and that I am now using is a Crown amplifier. That's right, like a Class D. It's the XLS model, that 1002. Um, to tell you the truth, actually, and, I, and the gain setting on the Crown 
for the W15 right now is set around 50%. Um, so it is driving the W15s so wonderfully compared to all the other amplifiers. Um, that level of detail before I was talking about with the bass and the different instruments, with the, with the, the, the crown, it stepped up another notch. Um, it gives me the impression too that the sound stage is deeper, um, that the room has a bit more of a pressurized feel to it, and the speed, my goodness, the level of control that the Crown amplifier, this cheap, roughly $500 amplifier, is controlling these drivers. I'm happy. I'm really happy. Sounds terrific. Um, what a combination. Really, really good. So, with the F15 set up this way, it's fast. The bass is textured. You can easily tell the difference between the bass instruments that are playing. The soundstage is gloriously deep um, and it is wide, uh, but mostly the baffles come into, the, come into play. Um, so using it from 30 hertz to 90 hertz, it's just beautiful, just beautiful. And it marries really well with the F15.